Hi! Today I'm excited to announce the new Peaks Online X Pro. One of the most important things about the new Peaks Online X Pro is that it includes all the functions that are included in Peak Studio, from identification to all the types of quantification. And one of the most important things about using Peaks Online is that it's very fast. So it's designed to be able to be used with a large amount of data, and it's designed to be used for high throughput. So we've added a lot of ease of use features to the software that make it possible to go through a large amount of data with as little manual labor as possible. Another thing, since it's been designed to be used with large data sets, it's been designed to be used with the most advanced hardware that's available on the market today. So it scales linearly with the hardware that you give it. And this is important for large data sets because when you're working with thousands of samples, it can be difficult for a desktop computer to make it work statistically. Because in order to compare large amounts of samples, you need to run them all in a single search. And to do that, you need a lot of memory. So the software needs to be able to handle that large amount of data and generate a result even if you're using thousands of samples. So first I'd just like to talk about the consistency between Peaks Online and Peak Studio. So we've put a lot of work in Peaks X Pro into making sure that the results that you see in Studio will be the same results that you would see in Peaks Online if you're working with the same data. So whether you're looking at de novo sequences, peptides, all the proteins identified, or grouped proteins, the results that you see between the two software, even though they're on different platforms, should be the same within a few percentage points of each other. And here I'd just like to show how Peaks scales linearly with the hardware that you give it. So with Peaks Online, whether you're working with a single workstation with, let's say, 32 threads, or a over 500 thread high performance cluster, or even working with some cloud technology, Peaks is going to be able to make the most use of that hardware that you give it. Okay, let's jump in and start taking a look at Peaks Online. So today I'm going to go through a Spectral Library generation to Spectral Library search and quantification workflow. So first I'm going to show how Peaks Online can be used to create a Spectral Library using a highly fractionated DDA dataset and then create a spectral library from a PeaksDB search result. Then I'm going to show how you can actually go in and search that spectral library DIA data set and do some label-free quantification on that, and then go through some of the result analysis. Here's the home page of Peaks Online. Peaks Online uses a web interface to connect to the main server. So from here you can click the project view to start a new project or go to your saved projects. Go to settings to look at your databases, upload new databases, modify spectral libraries, or create workflows, or go into the account details. Okay, so let's get started with creating our spectral library project. First you just then need to give it a name. And click next. So Peaks Online has been designed to work within a network. You can load your data from your local computer, but you can also set it up to work with a data repository. So let's go grab some data from our repository here. Okay, so here we've went to our data repository and picked up our DDA sample that we're going to be using to create our spectral library. Select all the files. Hold shift to select all, and you can click this button here to add samples by delimiters. So this is a cool ease of use feature that helps you separate your samples based on the file name. So you can use delimiters such as the underscore and a period to then pick this 002 to separate by sample name. So click the show example button here to show that, okay, we are separating by this sample number here. And then click upload. And all the samples will be added to the right. And then you could set the 
enzyme activation method and instrument type for this set of data. And so in this case, I'm going to select triple TOF and then click next. And here you can select your workflow. In this case, we just want to do a DDA database search because we're going to use that to create a Spectre library. And click next. And from this point, you can start to add your parameters. You can add some parameters that work well for triple TOF data. So the enzyme part, since we already selected it during the data loading step, we don't need to do that here. But it, this can be helpful if you're using multiple enzyme digests. It will make sure to use the proper enzyme rule for each data file. And select our database. In this case, we're working with a zebrafish database. And select modifications. You can use a search bar. And we have some additional algorithms that can be used here. So you can also click this button to search Peaks PTM with these parameters. So this will search all of the naturally occurring modifications in the Unimod database in order to find some extra modifications that we may not have expected. Then you can also use Spider, which is designed to find single amino acid variants. In this case, we're just going to do a database search. And then one of the things you could do here is then specify your false discover rate before even setting up the search. So we can specify a 1% peptide FDR and even a 1% protein FDR here and the number of required unique peptides per protein. Usually we recommend one or two and some de novo filters as well. Okay, so once you've set this up, you can actually save this as a workflow for future use and give it a name. and submit the search. And here we have the finished result. As you'll notice, it looks a lot like what you have in Peak Studio. We have the result tables showing all the identifications that were made. And you can see that we're able to make a spectral library of almost 170,000 peptides, which is pretty good for a zebrafish library. You can scroll, scroll through and see all the statistical charts. Come to the Protein tab, and you can see the details of all the identifications. You can scroll through to the coverage view, and you can click on any of the peptides, and it will bring up the annotated spectrum. All right, so now we want to make a spectrum library out of these results. So you come up here to Settings, go to Spectral Libraries, then Add Library, and we can create a library from our analysis. Give it a name. And it will start generating a library. All right, now we can start setting up our DIA search. So we need to give it a name. And remember that we can select some pre-existing workflows, which we'll do here. So we already have one pre-made for our Swath DIA. Then we can click Next. Then all we need to do is add our data. And here in the data repository, we have our swath data that we're going to do a label-free quantification analysis with. The authors in this case had several different tissues and different replicates of each from the zebrafish. And we can load it with our save by delimiter. In this case, we're going to use the underscore and select the area that we want to use. In this case, we're going to use the tissue and sample number and show the example and add it and upload it. And now you can see that we have all of our replicates separated into individual samples. And in this case, we have some brain samples, liver samples, and muscle samples. And then just click next. 
select the DIA quantification workflow. And notice that all the parameters are already preset in here for us. Now all we have to do is specify our conditions and you can use the search bar here to put in the tissue type and then select all the brain samples, add it to the right and do the same with the others. I just like to go over the quantification parameters. You can set them up here down at the bottom using the edit options. And we're going to use ANOVA, modified form exclusion, and we can using, even use a 1% adjusted FDR. And save and start the search. Okay, and here we have our final result. And one of the great things about Peaks Online is you can go straight to the export function if you'd like. Remember that we already set up all of our filters and parameters when we set up the search. So you can go here to export, select the exports that you'd like to include. And then you can either download one result table for everything, or you can even download by individual sample. All right, but well, let's go in and take a look at some of the actual result views. So we can come in here and take a look at the spectral library. And here we have our final result. Just like in Studio, notice here that we have the result tables showing you how many identifications we were able to make in each sample. And if you scroll down, you can see some statistical charts. And because we're doing a spectral library search, we have our IRT prediction charts. And come here to the protein tab and look at the identifications. And one of the features that's unique to Peaks Online is that you have this global coverage view where you can see based on the intensity of the red the more samples were able to find that peptide. Here in the quantification result we could see the volcano plot and importantly we could see our before and after ID transfer missing value chart here. One of the things I'd like to note here is in Peaks X Plus, we put a lot of focus towards reducing missing values. And you can see here that after ID transfer, we're able to keep we're able to keep missing values below 5% in all of the samples. Then you can come here to the protein tab. You can see the broken down heat map for each of the quantifiable proteins. And you can see based on the red color that the protein is upregulated in those samples, or green if it's downregulated in those samples. And you can scroll over the heat map to see the ratios. And go to the peptide tab to see the peptide details. Double click on any of the peptides. And it will show you the full XIC of all samples for that peptide quantification result. Then go to the ion match table to see the identification details. And this has been a quick overview of Peaks Online. If you'd like to try a demo, please contact us at support at bioin4.com.